This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Oh, what a blessing. I surrender I surrender All to thee my Blessed Savior I surrender Can I have a believing amen here today? If the two hands you brought belong to you, give the Lord a clap of faith. Oh, what a blessing. What a blessing. Give it to him. He deserves it. Mo Sharai. Beloved people of God, I believe that it is more gratifying and blessing to be part of this meeting than ever before. Privileged to be part of this great history that God in his mind and heart had determined long ago and making us to see in our time. Give him praise. Let me begin by saying thank you to our dear chairman for this wonderful opportunity. Big brother, we are blessed to have you. Yesterday, I almost determined in my mind that I will not preach today, but let him continue. If you were witnesses here, how he cut the scriptures pieces by pieces and joined them together. It was as though he was there when it was being written. What a blessing. I said to myself, if this is not grace, give him clap of it, will you please? We are blessed to have such a gift in our time. And thank God that through him he has brought this to us. We also want to bless our dear brother for the presentation today. Awesome. You know, when we were speaking, I was saying to myself, this thing here, the city churches can build one. Somebody didn't hear what I said. I said you can build one and feel it. You build one in Accra, build one in Amsterdam, build one in Washington. Did you hear that, Yao? Yes, you can. Shout hallelujah. Thank you also for the organizers for giving me this opportunity. You have been sitting for a while. May we please stand a short while for the reading of God's word. My portion this morning is a continuation to what our dear Dr. Deborah has just given to us. I'm talking about the waves of the spirit. I didn't choose the topic, but the chairman in his heart and mind gave the topic to me, so I'm speaking his words. Shout amen. amen. And I will be talking about the waves of the spirit and my question will be this what happened to the spirit the promise the father gave to us what happened to him Luke chapter 22 verse 49 Psalm 32 verse 8 Job chapter 32 verse 8 and Proverbs chapter 20 Verse 29, I will read all of them in a short while. Luke 24, 49 says, Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Psalm 28 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye in such a way that you will not miss your place. 
Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27 says, The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner parts of his heart. The last one is in Job 32 verse 8 and it says, But there is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty God. And the breath of almighty God gives him understanding hallelujah shall we lift up our hands to the king father this is the reason for which we have come breathe upon your church today everywhere all over the world the hearing of my voice let the fulfillment of your word come to pass today do something awesome touch the souls of men transform nations and people in jesus mighty name let us shout amen and please be seated praise the lord people of god Precious people, I'm speaking about the waves of the spirit. But my question is, what happened to that spirit of promise? The world today and its people seem to be in the search of despondency. Everything now seems to be out of order. Human behavior particularly is quickly deteriorating. It is being managed in the guise of human rights advocacy. In today's mass effort to develop himself through science and technology and other modern derivatives, there is rampant depression, loneliness, misunderstanding, chaos everywhere, hatred, war, religious fanatism, and unrest everywhere. My candid observation is that not even the church today or the believers in Christ seem to understand or find their feet or direction or guide. All right, advocates and others, as I listen to them, they sound a feeling of hopelessness going forward. For them, the way forward seems to be hopeless and to a dead end. One of such in the early 1960s, predicted the demise of God in this era. These theologians and missiologists propose, suggest, and draw out steps and suggest strategies, but they do not work. Nevertheless, the scriptures are very clear. God Almighty has promised and has a remedy for this season. To the church and the average Christian, the voice of God keeps ringing out. I will instruct you. I will teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. How will he do it? The Bible says the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inward depths of his heart. Then Job chapter 33, 2 says, But there is a spirit in a man, and the breath of God, that which you call the wave of the Spirit of Almighty, gives him understanding. This breath is what we call the Spirit. And if you will, the Holy Spirit. Then I passed to ask a question. If the spirit and the breath of God will come upon you and give you direction in such a way that you will not miss your providential way. Then there is a delicate question that has been in my heart for a long time. The question is, so what happened to that spirit? Think about it. What happened to that blessed Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father, that which he, Christ Jesus, promised to send and sent? The third person of the Godhead, if you will, the paraclete, the helper. This blessed spirit is the custodian of the church. He is the keeper of the gate of the church. And he is the eternal guide of the church. Somebody scream and shout amen. 
John chapter 14, 16 and 18, 25, 15 says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. And he says in verse 14 to 16, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Yesterday, the chairman said the most powerful organism on earth is not the army of any nation, but it is the church. And the reason is that that dwells and abides in this church, that element that created the world, that spirit. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. And John 15, 26 said, But when the helper comes, to whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of the truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And 16, 7 says, Nevertheless, everybody scream and say, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Lift up your right hand. And he did. The church today suffers because it neglects that spirit. And is not sensitive to him. But listen, he is the custodian or the gatekeeper and the helper and the guardian of the church. The believer in Christ misses all her direction and guide because he does not know or recognize the spirit. Somebody here scream and say the spirit. In this era of possessing the nation through various well-articulated concepts, such as the PIWCs and Pensa International and HUMs and PMWDs and Ye Churches and Ministry to Celebrities and Ministries to the Other Sheep and School Outreaches and City Churches just like yours. The conjunct factor that will make it work is when the Spirit breathes. When the Spirit breathes into it. The Spirit is God. He is the third person of the Godhead. He possesses all attributes of the Godhead. He is the spirit of truth. He knows all things. He can do all things. And he can make all things happen. Shout hallelujah. That is what David spoke about when he said, How can I go away from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your spirit? If I ascend into the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uppermost part of the areas, even there, your hand shall lead me. And your right hand shall hold me. And if I say, surely the darkness shall not hide from me, even the night shall be around me like light. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from me. But the night shines as the day. The darkness and light are both alike to you. Can you lift up your two hands, please? Can we rise before him? He is the spirit of revival. He is the spirit of restoration. He is the one we call renewal. He is the spirit of refreshing. When the spirit sent for this wave, there is a renaissance. What the churches need today is not articulation of words, but words backed by the Spirit. The missionary can only break new grounds and sustain it by the ways of the Spirit. The life of the child of God will flourish only when he is touched by the Spirit. Somebody shout amen. Oh, that God will send forth a wave. You know what, friends? Many young people ask me questions. They ask questions such as, what are the things you do that make your ministry flourish? I look at them with pity.
He has helped me everywhere and he can help you no matter where you are. Lift those two hands up and speak to him in two seconds or three or four or three minutes. You need him. The churches need him. The people need him. The missionary need him. The city churches need him. He breathes into the churches and bring lives into it. Maraba Satara Mondaria. Robodobo Satara Mandoro Robosha. Bring forth your spirit, oh God. I want to see a rowing in the house and a desire for him to come and a quest for him to roll. Rabado si branda la bashata. Rabadabo si brandini mozabe. Oh, we long for you. Can we be seated for a while? So, what does it mean? To have a wave of the Holy Spirit. It is the periodic intervention of the move of God, the Holy Spirit, upon a generation, a nation, or community, or people, or individuals who seeks after God's Spirit to intervene in their spiritual dryness. There is a wave of the Spirit when the Holy Spirit comes to revive, restore, and brings a divine awakening upon a spiritually dead situation or people to make them alive to the consciousness of God. It brings back an awareness of God's consciousness. It revives spiritually dead situations to the sinner. He brings an awareness of the existence of God, sin consciousness, and the sinfulness of sin and repentance. To the already Christian, he brings an alertness and sensitivity of God, the Holy Spirit, and desire to please him. He revives the church. So he revives God's people and brings them to their former position or condition of first love. Which used to exist in them. In the wave of the spirit, there is a revival. Particularly a restoration to an impaired or non-improved condition through God the Holy Spirit. That is what the heart of man has always longed for. But listen to me carefully. Are you here? Don't take it for a joke. In this season of this congress, God, by a wave of his spirit, will restore and revive you. Back your... I didn't hear this. I didn't hear this. He will restore to you your dignity. He will restore to you your excellence. He will restore to you sound character. He will restore to you wealth. Out of nowhere, the wealth of the nations will come into your hands. He will restore to you your past glory. He will restore to you your divine favor. And here in this place without any provocation, if you came in sick, you are going back healed. Oh, come on, shout amen. If you came in weak, you are going back strong. If you came in fainting, God's strength by his spirit is energizing you once again everywhere. Hallelujah. There appears to be in the Holy Scriptures a very clear pattern that whenever there is chaos and misdirection in the affairs of the world or a nation or in the affairs of individuals, the intervention that brings correction and renaissance has always been God the Holy Spirit. For instance, there is a clear scripture passage of Advent that shows that when there was chaos and ambiguity or unsurmounting problem, or a quest for help and relief, the answer had always been the intervention of God the Holy Spirit first. In my first case, you find in the beginning of time of creation, as recorded in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, when there was chaos on the earth, voidness, darkness, and formlessness, the answer was the Spirit of God. The spirit moved upon the face of the waters and covered the deep before there was creation. Genesis 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness on the face of the earth. And the spirit of God 
was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Come on, shout amen. amen. See, there was first a move or a wave of the spirit on the waters before the declaration of the word. In the days of Noah, when floods had overtaken the world because of sin and corruption, in Genesis chapter 6, because the spirit had withdrawn, the instrument which Noah sent to confirm the state or level of the flat on the earth was a dove. The dove is a symbol of the spirit according to Mark 1 verse 10. It was the dove which confirmed the dryness of the land and broke back a positive report on the state of the land after the flood. The factor of the importance of the spirit in revival restoration in each dispensation is not debatable. He, the spirit, is always the determining factor of the revival. Now, in the book of Isaiah, the prophet, he describes a state of physical and spiritual dissolution on the land of Israel. In Isaiah chapter 23, verse 9 to 15, when you have time, read it. There is a season when the church or the Christian slams in complacency. When both spiritual and physical life begin to cease to flourish. And Isaiah the prophet describing it says in verse 14 that because of complacency, the palaces will be forsaken. The bustling city will be declared. The forts and towers will become layers forever. A joy of wild donkeys and a pasture for flock. The state will become like a wilderness. He then brings an answer in verse 15, he said emphatically that it will be so until the spirit is poured from on high. Then the wilderness will become a fruitful field and the fruitful field is counted as a forest. I'm not hearing your amen. It will be so and can't be coming like that until suddenly the spirit is poured forward. In my fourth case, the prophet Ezekiel in the book of Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25 to 26, and you note carefully 25 to 27, this out of the people and the dissolution of the earth. In those seasons, there was a dissolution on the earth because of evil, decadence, and rot in the hearts of men. But God promised a restoration. But in order for the restoration to be sustained, he promised to put the Spirit, capital S, into the hearts of all men. I will read it briefly. It says, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all filthiness and from all idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of you, your flesh, and give you a heart of flesh. And now listen. I will put my spirit, big S, within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Until then, you will not be able to do it. Then the result in verse 20, 35 to 36 will be that. So they will say, this same church, this same land, this same people that was desolate has become like the garden of Eden. And the wasted, desolate, and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. Then the nations which are left all around you shall know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt the ruined places and planted and was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it and I will do it. Then suddenly, the same group of people that the people reject and the churches are dry and more body comes in will become a garden of Eden. The churches will be filled to their capacity. But coming to the point, it's the real thing which is the fifth case. See, the culminating passage is in the book of Joel. And in this book, 
The Almighty God, as part of his restoration package to the people of Israel, emphatically decides to bring a lasting solution to their problems by sending a wave of the Spirit into all flesh. This has been the greatest expectation of the people since they settled in the promised land. This they refer to as the Father's promise. Yesterday, the last verse, the, the, the last verse that chairman was reading read and said then through faith all the nations will receive the promise that is the anticipation that is the key to the making of the church the key of raising up the things with God they refer to it as the father's promise they look up to it and desire for it in their day Joel 2, 28, 29 says, And it shall come to pass afterwards, I will pour forth my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see vision, and also on my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. This promise. was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. And this is what the New Testament referred to as the promise of the Father. Jesus our Lord and Christ before his advent to heaven promised the church to ask the Father to send him to the church. Behold, I send the promise of the Father to you. But tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued. And this divine promise was fulfilled. It was the official opening of the church of Christ since then. The whole of the New Testament has depended on the promise of the Father. The promise of the blessed spirit. This promise is the game changer. It is the anticipation of the people throughout the generation and ages. The promise of the blessed Holy Spirit. This wave of the Spirit has been since Jesus ascended on high. And today we need him more than ever before. Oh God, send forth a wave of your Spirit upon your church. Hallelujah. He's the one. He's the one the world and the church needs. He's the answer to all problems. He's a replacement of the Lord Jesus on earth. He's the key to the chaos of the age. He's the one who convicts the world of sin and righteousness. He is the Pentecostal fire. Hallelujah. Shout amen. If the spirit was not up to the task, Jesus would not have told us. But Jesus said, I will send the comforter who will teach you all things. He came and is still abiding with us today. I sat in the conference when the, 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 the lecture began to teach. And he taught about everything secular humanists are doing, which is going to confront the church and the world. And everybody in the place was shaken until he began to give his points. He gave the point, point number one, this is what you have to do. Point number two, not number three, point number four. And I was just listening until point number seven. When he finished, I went straight to him and asked him, so what happened to that spirit? He has always been the answer to every chaos. Jesus has given us enough. If the spirit was not up to it, he will not have said it. Can you scream amen in this place? The one you need is that spirit. He teaches the way. He guides you where to go. He brightens up your spirit and show you the way in such a way that you will not make a mistake. He's the one that raises the church. No time to boss you today. But look at me. Going from a very village setting, not with too much education, and I have 43 assemblies opened. And everything was there. And you carry me straight to P.I.W.C. Kumasi. No time to boss you. But at that time, there had not been an Opokunina to come and tell the people you can remove your, 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 uh -huh, or your, your, you can wear dresses. You are a strange person when you are a PRWC man. Hello? 
and you are sitting in the heart of Kumasi, and look at me as I sat there. All my elders and everybody is either a lecturer or professor or something. I don't have to. That is also another English. Shout amen. amen. You need something to survive. What did I say? You need something to what? To survive. It's not about the, the, the training of your mind or how best you can sing and jump. But it's about something of God that can change your situation when the wave of God comes into your life. I'm still preaching to God's people. Scream and shout amen. amen. I go to church every evening angry. Oh, Jai, I'm only confessing. Because when I look at the people, I will go to the church like you do, clean up all the seats and the chairs, and they will come, and when they are sitting down, they will look at their chair like this, and look at their shoe before they sit down. Meanwhile, I clean the chair. <laughs> and so in my mind, I have already calculated them. I go to Sunday church. Wednesday, there will be nobody. Friday, there will be nobody, and I'm crying inside my heart. But one day, I made the decision. I went into a play. Ah, man, my survival. I'm coming your avenue right now. Somebody shout, amen. amen. I entered into my room and prayed from morning at dawn until Saturday, three o'clock. And all of a sudden, somebody sits beside me. Then I was playing with two of my girls. Then he says, Who are these? I said, these are my children. He said, but do you love them? I said, I love them very much. Then the scene quickly changed. I was in church. And all the people inside the church, which I think that they are wrong people, are sitting in front of me, looking into my eyes. He said, but who are these people? The people who are in the church. Then he said, but do you love the two? I said, I did. He said, these are also mine. I purchased them with my blood. They belong to me. My whole concept about pastoring changed that day because the Holy Ghost confronted me. I lived in that place for seven years. Nobody did anything to me and I felt it because I understood that these are God's people. <laughs> then he showed me how to live in the heart of that city. He said, you can only get the heart of the people in this place through their tradition. And so after I finish uh, English service on Sunday, I'll come back and sit when they are going to work. And all the local people in the place will run to me. And the blind will see. And the cancer will vanish. And the things will this, And the church started becoming big. Am I talking to God's people in this place? Shout hallelujah. It is not by might. It is not by power. It's by, by the spirit of God. One touch of the spirit. Your entire ministry and the things you do will suddenly change. Somebody scream and say the spirit. Oh come on say it with passion. Hallelujah. I am running to a close. My Simple question and inquiry today in anticipation of addressing our topic. If this spirit is that adequate, why are we going through what we are going through? What happened to that spirit? Why can't we find or assess him? Why are we in such stupendous problems? Many theories and instructions are being promulgated as answers to the world's and its compounded problems today. We struggle, yet there seems to be no answers. But hey, the wave of the Spirit became pronounced in Acts chapter 2. Come on, you didn't hear. He sparked a great revival. It is the genesis of the modern day revival. The rave brought with it a season of refreshing from the presence of God. That was the beginning of the church of Christ. Subsequently, there have been waves of the spirit in the church. 
When they slam into nominality, it is referred to as awakening or renewal or restoration in the church. It is this wave that restores all things which God has promised before Jesus comes again. Listen, can your two hands go up? The wave of the spirit is bringing a restoration. He restores the gifts and the fruits of the spirit. Lift it up. He restores the manifestation of the power of God on earth. He restores miracles and signs and wonders. Lift it better higher. Listen, for the times today, what the church need is the might of Jesus. The Bible says for the spirit of God rested upon him with a spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding and the fear of the Lord and also said it rested upon him the spirit of might. By that might you can conquer every city. By that might you can conquer every nation. By that might you can conquer every people. I'm speaking to God's people. Ha. Huh. My time is up. My time is up. The technologies revival and refreshing and awakening or revival restoration or encountering the spirit may mean different things for different groups of people depending on their Christian orientation, beliefs, purposes, observation, and sometimes how long they have been in existence. But no matter what the terminology used or the theological interpretation, it does not matter much. Look at me. The reality is that there is a season in the life of the nations and in the life of the church and the life of the people when spirituality is compromised. There is all kinds of dryness and emptiness and apathy and unresponsiveness to God and his divine spirit. And the people in the church, for instance, began to be stick to programming and the status quo, away from the leading of the spirit of God. Everything in church life becomes ordinary. There is spiritual deadness and blindness where sin and evil doesn't matter anymore. And dependency on the faith in God and supernatural is completely gone. That is when lives of God's people become empty and dead to God. And material gain and fame and unworthy craving of vain glory reign supreme. The people lack faith and trust in God, but abide in unbelief and responsiveness to the things of God. It's a state of spiritual wilderness. Think about it. Think about it. Nevertheless, there is said to be a wave of the spirit when God shows mercy to the prayer cry of his people and sends his blessed Holy Spirit to intervene in their affairs. As I speak to you, it doesn't matter how dry. When he comes, then life is spiritual desert is killed. Then the spiritual eyes of the people are open. Then there is genuine repentance from sin in its vice. And I see men walk from everywhere coming onto the platform and they are crying. People that are stuck, things that are deep, they come to church and by the preaching. One woman had come from a something in his palace. Somebody owed him here in church and was coming to collect her money. And for somebody coming to collect her money on Sunday morning, you can imagine. But as he stepped into the church, the power of God seized hold of her. By the preaching of the word of God, she began to cry and with tears in her eyes, walked up to the platform. And that word rested on her up to today. We have done a wedding for Pastor Truth, Apostle Truth's daughter. I was descending the steps. 
Then she hooked my neck and said, do you remember me? I said, how can I remember? And she said, several years ago, the spirit of the Lord touched me. I gave the money away, but I kept that Jesus. I kept that Jesus. I kept that Jesus. I kept that you started clapping. I didn't ask you to clap. But you can continue with it, you see. See, there are more recent revivals in the, in the 20th century and they include the revival of Wales. The heart of our chairman is crying for this. That in a season such as this, we will not be gathering to be talking. But that God will do something to this church. Do something to its people. The revival that is sent to Wales the revivals that he sent on Azusa Street in 1906, the Bacoli revival in 1940s, and Jesus People revival in 1917, the Chile revival in 1971. They include many others. Ah, will come upon us today. There is a great urgency today than it was before. Hallelujah. 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 But how does it come? Or how do we receive him? Number one, the spirit comes through the prayer cry of the people of God for mercy. First Chronicles chapter 7 verse 40. He comes through the spiritual hunger and test for the spirit. He comes through genuine repentance. He comes through a cry of faith to God for the spirit. He comes sometimes through biblical fasting and prayer. He comes through the searching through of the Holy Scriptures in sincerity of heart. And when he comes, something happens to the people of God. Lift your two hands. When he comes, according to Isaiah 58, verse 8 to 11, can I say it? Your light will break forth like the morning. Your healing will spring forth speedily. Your righteousness will go forth ahead of you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. That means God will be with you. When he comes, God will respond quickly to your call. The Lord God will cause your light to shine in obscurity. When he comes, the Lord will be your continual guide and satisfy your heart's desire. Every darkness in your life will be turned into a moon day. And like the chairman will say the big one, can our hands go up? When he comes, you shall be like a watered garden and a spring of water whose water will never run dry or fail. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The better you clap, the greater your glory. Some of the people would have dared to stand because the better you clap and the better you stand. My soul, Rabbi, God can do it again. God can do it again. May we rise up on our feet. God can do it again. My soul, Rabbi, God can do it again. Yesterday and the day before, he's always still the same. He can do it again. Do it again. He can do it again. Hallelujah.